it's Michael from Pendula here and I'm just wanting to show you my workaround for audio taking it from Adobe Premiere Pro uh, into Adobe Audition and then back into Premiere Pro for export. Here I have uh, Presenter Kelly as for some work I'm currently doing and basically what I want to do is this is the raw audio recorded on a Rode NTG3 as you can see here in the bottom of the timeline. I'll just expand that out for you to see a bit better. And I'm wanting to process this all at once. Now Premiere can do that, that's that's fair and valid, but I like to use Adobe Audition. So I just wanna show you my workarounds and this is the way I do it. So what I do is I select the audio uh, that I'm wanting to, the, just the first clip of the sequence that I'm wanting to export. I go edit and this cool feature here, edit in Adobe Audition, it's not clip, it's the whole sequence. So I select the whole sequence and what it does, it brings up this dialog box here, which is saying, look, this is what I want the name to be, and it's gonna take the entire sequence. It's gonna send through dynamic link, which is a great feature that links together Adobe Suite programs. And so I don't wanna render any audio effects. I have none on anyway. Uh, I don't wanna send the clip volume keyframes, because again, I have none on, and I'm gonna open it in Adobe Audition, so make sure that's selected. So I'm gonna click OK, and that's gonna bring up my Adobe Audition window. Now this is what it looks like in Adobe Audition. So here's my video through dynamic link and here's the audio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the audio and each of those, each of these currently are individual audio clips. So what I want to do is bounce to new track and the selected track only. So I'm going to bounce that down to completely new track. So here it is in bounce one. Now what I want to do now is I'm in what's called the multi-track view which shows me all the tracks uh, in this session within Audition. So I want to go across to Waveform and now I'm looking at my newly bounced Waveform of Kelly's audio. So what I do is I just clean up uh, her audio. What I do is I remove uh, breathing and remove silence clips first up uh, and that's because we're recording this in not a perfectly uh, quiet environment. So there is some residual noise uh, within these parts. So I just want to remove those. Sometimes on audio that's a little bit more of a problem. I'll do a noise reduction um, and sometimes that works better uh, to first noise reduce. But in this case the audio is pretty good and there wasn't much noise on these days. But I'll just take out a little bit of this breathing. And what I've done is I've mapped uh, the silence command, creating silence, to the key, uh, the number five key on my keyboard. So that means I can just select all the audio and instead of what you would normally do is right click silence, you can see there it's number five. So then I just click five and it creates silence. So that's a really quick way to just give a clean up of audio. And sometimes I'll listen to what I'm cleaning. This little blip here this stage is a little breath. Really? This stage is little <gasps> And sometimes you might need to leave them in just to give a better diction uh, with what she's saying. But usually I could try and remove as much of those little breaths and stuff as possible. So um, <clears throat> I'll just work on that. It might just skip ahead for you and we'll pick up once I've so once I've got through and silence this audio will pick up and I'll show you my process from then on. Right, so I've just got to the end and I'm just creating my last bit of silence just in the last part of the clip there. So I'm happy with all of that now silenced uh, and it's sounding good, so I'm pretty happy. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just drop down to amplitude and compression and I wanna just do pretty crude single band total compression on this. Now I'm looking here and I wanna sort of compress down to the smallest piece of audio that I have in this recording. There was a second camera shot where the audio is a little different, a little lighter. So here in this section in the center here, you can see minus 17, minus 18 is around about what I want to compress down to. So I've just got those settings from a previous uh, audio uh, render I did. So minus 17 on the dB for the threshold. The ratio, I, I do three to one ratio. Uh, attack, I do one and release 150 milliseconds. That seems to work pretty well for this type of audio recorded on the NTG3 Rode mic, which is great quality audio to work with. So I'm gonna apply that and that gets me down nice and low. There's still some peaks here and here. So I'm gonna go again and just compress that down again uh, with the single band compressor again. And again, not worrying too much about this because I know it's gonna sound okay in the end. So 
that's really my compression. Then I want to normalize. So I'm going to go back, take normalize and process uh, to minus one dB and process that. So it's going to have a listen. Who will be the manager of the applicant? A HS. That's sounding good, not too SE. It's quite nice. Kelly's got a great speaking voice. So all I'm going to do is apply her preset. Just for the sake of it, all these are is some parametric EQs, just removing minus 4 dB from frequencies that I think aren't great within this room and the mic arrangement, and that always changes, but I'm basically going to take them off. So apply, uh, there's three different settings there, but I'm just going to apply that rack and have a listen again. Who will be the manager of the applicant. And I can HR hear, specialist. maybe you can hear that, maybe you can't, but I can hear that her voice has cleaned up a little bit in that. So that's basically all I worry about with that. Uh, and then I uh, basically don't even save actually. What I do is now I go back to the multi-track view and here's my session. And I want to solo out the bounce track that I, that I created and that I edited uh, and did all the EQ and the work in. So now multi-track has this cool feature, export to Adobe Premiere Pro. So I'm going to export now back to Adobe Premiere Pro. So mix down session, I want a stereo file and open in Audition, uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, sorry, I'm in Audition now, of course. So I export that, and you'll see it's gonna export and run, and now it comes back into Premiere, and it tells me here, copy Audition track, and I wanna copy that to my current sequence. So that's gonna drop that audio, as you can see here, down in the bottom of the screen, in my sequence. Now, I wanna keep that sequence as my original, so I'm gonna to go to the project window, I'm not sure if you can see, this might be off screen on my other monitor, but the project window, I'm gonna duplicate that sequence, and then I'm gonna call that sequence video five replaced. Now, I'm gonna open that up, and you should see it pop up here in the sequence on the edge here. So the reason I do that is because I wanna keep that original audio, always wanna keep the original audio. So I'm just going to close out that sequence and now I've got my replace sequence and in my replace sequence I'm going to lock the visuals. I'm going to select and delete the audio and then I'm just going to take the audition session and just drag it up into my audio space under Kelly. So welcome back to now I have Kelly video series on recruitment. It's now time to select and the I have her audio all cleaned up underneath. So hopefully that's helpful, guys. That's my work through from taking Premiere Audio in a timeline like this, a simple um, speaking head, talking head timeline, taking it into Audition, doing some work with it, and bringing it back into Premiere Pro. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.